This is an ultra black. And in case you missed the memo, ultra blacks are the new black. These light capturing coatings have been used to cover luxury cars and even make art projects. Like this black hole, which was so black, a viewer actually fell in, their depth perception rendered useless by the optical illusion. That black hole is an artwork by the artist Anish Kapoor, who controversially secured exclusive rights to use what was then the blackest coating, called Vanta Black, in his work. That upset a lot of other artists, who also wanted to use these blackest blacks. And the whole art community were like, we can't take this, this is so out of order, this is so rude, you've got to make a black that's better than his black. That's Stuart Semple, and he created this paint, which is one of the blackest paints you can buy. Black 3.0 is literally the closest you can get to a black hole in a bottle. But here's the thing. There are blacker blacks, and scientists are measuring just how much light they can capture. Our blacks are the blackest that we know of. That's John Lehman, a scientist at the National Institute for Standards and Technology. He's helped develop one of the blackest ultra blacks yet. The not so secret sauce, carbon nanotubes, which can only really be seen under powerful magnification. Carbon nanotubes are a structure made of a layer of graphene, a, a millionth of the diameter of a human hair. Those nanotube blacks might have military applications, be useful for photography, and to make ever more accurate sensors. So why do we care? I spoke to both Semple and Lehman to find out what's behind this race to make the most light-trapping substances yet. But first, let's watch some paint dry. For you, this journey really began with uh, Anish Kapoor and the sort of locking up of the blackest black. If that hadn't happened, would there be this race to create the blackest black in the art world? I don't think there would have been, because I don't think the art world would have even known that there was a material like this. I mean, if it had stayed in astronomy or defense or military or something, we wouldn't have known it existed. But because Anish was using it, artists sort of tuned into it. And then we realized that we wanted to have a go and, and use something like that too. We're artists, we're interested in what you can see with your eye. So really it doesn't matter what it's doing in the infrared spectrum, in the UV spectrum, in a science lab. What we want is a really flat, black looking black we can make work with. So if you put it next to Vanta Black, yeah, it kind of looks similar to the naked eye, but if you start measuring it in a lab, there's, there's miles of difference. Why do you think people are so excited about the idea of creating the blackest black paint? I think artists have always been very interested in black because it's actually not a colour. We're talking about the absence of light. And um, that's just been exciting since the beginning of time. So when you're going about trying to make a paint that is not a colour, but the absence of colour, where do you begin? A lot of the other super black things that you see are scientific processes. And they're, they're incredible. Um, but they're made in labs and they grow nanotubes and they're made in vacuum chambers. It's complicated. So we approached it like paint makers. So black three isn't the same thing as, you know, these Vanta blacks or singularity black. It, it, although it does have nanoparticles in it, it is very much a paint. So we had to create a new pigment from scratch called black magic, which is born matte. Can you tell me about some of the ways you've seen black 3.0 being used in the wild? I've seen it used in so many exciting ways. Um, you know, we always wanted to make something usable. So that was the whole point. Astronomers are using it, amateur astronomers, inside their telescopes so they reflect less light. Photographers are using it inside camera bodies. Magicians are using it. Sure, this paint is cool and it makes for some pretty neat art projects, but scientists are pushing for these light absorbing materials for different reasons. This is a microscopic image of a forest of carbon nanotubes. That's what makes the most light absorbing ultra blacks work so well. Carbon nanotubes are a structure made of a layer of graphene, a, a millionth of the diameter of a human hair. So how do these carbon nanotubes capture particles of light, or photons, as scientists call them? So basically what we're doing when we make something very black is we're creating this topology where in, if photons intersect this coating, they rattle around until they get absorbed. But making light-absorbing carbon nanotubes isn't easy. It has to be done under careful conditions. Each lab does it a little differently, but the basics are roughly the same. So when you're developing this extremely black light-absorbing 
surface. You have to start with these nanotubes. How are those grown or developed? So let's say we're going to make some carbon nanotubes. So uh, we do, in fact, grow them in an unevacuated oven. That is, it has a, a vacuum. And we're going to introduce carbon into that oven, and that's going to be the basis of the nanotube. Uh, so we're going to grow the nanotubes on a substrate, which is in our case is silicon. You can think of that as the cookie sheet. And then we're going to grease the cookie sheet with uh, iron. And then as the substrate heats up and the carbon is introduced, the nanotube will start to grow from the substrate. And the longer we bake it, so to speak, the taller the nanotube will grow. After that, we take it out of the oven and we have a wafer uh, with nanotubes on it. So the whole point of this is more than just a vanity project. We're not just trying yes. to make the blackest black because it makes yes. for cool art or because it's a great thing to brag about, but because there are right. real practical applications of this stuff. Exactly. Um, what do you think are some of the most important things we can do with these blackest blacks? We're not just trying to make the blackest black. We're trying to make useful detectors. Right? So the carbon nanotube coatings on a detector allow us to do better measurements of the temperature of the Earth. There is room for, you know, 10 times improvement over what's been done. The temperature measurements we have of the Earth right now could be improved by a factor of 10 with your instruments? It, there's a difference between what we can do in the lab on Earth and what we can do in space. So our goals for what we're doing in space are approaching a 10 times improvement. And because we can put them on small, fast, relatively inexpensive detectors means we can put them into space more readily. I'm, I'm imagining these sort of satellites painted with the blackest black coating being launched into space. Is that sort of accurate or, or can you describe what you've actually okay. sent into space? So for the blackest coatings that we put on detectors, they're typically part of a larger instrument. So the detector might be, you know, a few millimeters by a millimeter. And it's buried inside this instrument that has a prism and some optics and so on. So it's taking that light, dispersing it, picking a wavelength and looking at it very closely. And do you just have the one satellite or what kind of scale are we talking about? Right now, we just have one satellite. We've just launched our first one. Um, and we have another one planned. This obviously isn't the first attempt to make an ultra black black. There are other right. materials like Vanta Black is one that's been in the headlines a lot. Black 3.0 paint is another one. Um, what makes your black different than those ones? Uh, we are interested scientifically in this question of, you know, what's the blackest black? And, and, and uh, to be frank, I mean, we have a publication which shows that our blacks are the blackest that we know of, and we've rigorously defended the uncertainties and the measurement method. And, you know, in the spirit of scientific progress, I would challenge anybody else to do the same and see if they agree with us. By your own measurements, the material you've developed captures some small percentage of more light than anything else out there. That's what we believe. When we get to this level, of blackness, we're in this realm of, well, is it really the blackest black or is it the best measurement of the blackest black? Um, and so at least in the scientific world, or, or, you know, for us, where we have to know very accurately, we put effort into that. So I don't know how much blacker we can make something and actually know that we made it blacker. Because there's such a small amount of light being reflected yes. back that it becomes increasingly hard to measure that amount of light. Yes, exactly, exactly. Thank you so much for joining us. Yeah, it's great to talk to you. Thank you.